Today with my Muse Hobby Laser, I have been making acrylic trophies. These are super, super cool. The kids are gonna love them. All right, so these cost about 11 to 12 bucks a piece to make. So as far as trophies go, they're maybe just a touch on the more expensive side, but man, are they super cool. So here's how we did it. This base is available on Amazon. Okay, it was about eight bucks. They're sold in a two pack and a four pack. Both the two pack and the four pack came with this uh, acrylic puck to use, just one in all of those. I had to buy the rest of them uh, separately. Here's what's important to know is that the slot in this is four millimeters. This acrylic is four millimeters wide. The, all the other acrylic that I had, that most of what I found in the US is one eighth, which is 3.15, so it's slightly undersized. So I ended up just using this piece that, I, that, that it came with. I bought more from the seller on Amazon. And uh, I, I'm happy because it, it happens to work in this instance. But say you wanted a trophy that was more rectangular, taller shaped, you could certainly cut your own. I think it's going to be best in this application using four millimeter acrylic, but you could certainly do something and you could cut it out of whatever you wanted. If you were going to be cutting your own and doing a, a graphic like this, you would want to, in, in order of the, the process that you're doing, you would want to do your, your raster, which is your etch. You would want to do that first. That's, that's drawing the picture. And then you would want to do your vector, which is the cut. Those are using full spectrums terms. So you could print whatever image you wanted on here and then cut it out into whatever shape you wanted. But again, I did not do that. So, all right, here's what we start by doing is that when these are shipped, they're shipped with uh, this protective label on both sides. I fully inserted this into here and then marked it. This was just so that from the, with, the, with the picture I had, I could potentially see where that line was just for placing this image. With a Sharpie, that would work a lot better. But when you actually get ready to, to do this work, you're gonna be peeling one of the two sides off. Go ahead and leave the protective film on the other side because this is the side that's gonna to be touching our honeycomb down there. And we certainly don't want any scratches. This acrylic is cast acrylic. There are two choices, it's extruded and cast. The cast is gonna show up white when it's uh, given uh, an LED light below it, which at the moment's blue, but if this was bright white, this would look bright white. The extruded is gonna look slightly uh, different. So, okay, we'll put this away and we'll dive into the actual project itself. All right, so we talked about just leaving that on there. I have a blank workspace. We're gonna take a picture of our image. Now, when I, when I ran these, I actually had six of these, one, two, three on the bottom, three on the top. I, uh, I aligned, I take my honeycomb base and everything I have in here is loose because I use my, my, my rotisserie below there quite a bit. So you see, I don't have my bolts in here. So that is just kind of resting in there as, as my bottom. And the honeycomb is loose. It's not actually sitting in anything. I jam the honeycomb up and I wedge it up against the aluminum block that's up, up there on the top, and I wedge it up against the stepper motor that's there. And what that does is that squares off my honeycomb so that I can square my workpiece. And I did that by squaring the bottom of that acrylic edge just up nice against the bottom of the, the honeycomb. Now, one thing that I was critical of, of full spectrum on with RE2 was, there was somewhere in the instructions that said you could press the camera capture button twice and that it would go ahead and start the measurement process. And as you see, this is red. It gave me a little warning, said it was gonna start at height measurement, move red dot over material. Yeah, but it didn't go anywhere. Well, I kind of figured it out now, and it worked in RE2, but it, it's a little bit more evident in RE3. What you gotta do is you just need to jog, jog your laser out of the, the, the corner, which this is zero on the X and zero on the Y. That's where it starts. Jog it out of there so that the uh, the gantry has room to move and guess what pressing it twice is in fact going to work so my apologies to full spectrum i was critical there and i was wrong however y'all did a terrible job explaining what had to be done so it's going ahead and it's doing its photographing of the bed right now i could have initiated that from the uh, little camera icon but did not need to so let's talk about how accurate this is with the photography of the bed. So again, I did six pieces and then I dragged over six files and I shot them all and they look awesome just by lining them up by eye. Well, not entirely by eye, but I have everything centered by eye. So pretty cool. I think it's really, really accurate and you can totally rely 
on this image that's here as far as, hey, where's the center of this thing? I, I completely recommend it. I, I've done the bottom of a tumbler before with a, with a rastered image so that when somebody drank from it, there was a little goofy image on the bottom of the tumbler. And, you know, it was perfect because that was round and I had to have it exactly centered. So, okay, this is just a picture of our workspace. Let's drag in a PDF. And keep in mind that since we're working on the back side of our trophy, this is the back side and all the data, all the, the, the rasterization happened there, right? Which by the way, this is very, very faint. There's not a lot of material that's been ablated. The front of it is this way. Our image has to be flipped horizontally. So I worked on this in Photoshop and in Inkscape and then I saved them all as PDFs and imported them in the machine and realized, oh crap, they're gonna come out backwards when they're actually in the trophy. So you're gonna to have to put them backwards. Now, okay, we've imported this, you saw it import. We imported it as a PDF and the reason we did that is PDFs contain a lot of information and they're scalable, which is awesome. When we, when we expand this layer, which is, this layer is the image file that I just brought in. There's, you're gonna see there's, there's two things. There's actually more than that, but two main things, subsets here. This, with this little photo image, that's the raster data. So that's actually what is gonna be drawn on there as a picture. This, this is vector. There's a lot more information there. These are elements, these are paths, they're vectors. Those are cuts. So again, I go back to the fact, if you were gonna be cutting your own shape and doing this from scratch, if you just had a 12 by 20 piece of acrylic and you wanted to make your own, you would need to do your raster, which is your, the, the picture first, and then do your vector, which is your cut first. We don't need any vector information here. I've got it highlighted. I'm gonna whack the delete key. Bam, see you later. Here we are, just our, just our raster data. Now, if for whatever reason, you saw that you had red bars on the edge of your workpiece. What's this is really telling you is that the head is not going to be, the laser head is not going to be able to go everywhere the image is. So at the moment, you'll see it's, it's just off the honeycomb. It's off of the work bed. As I slide it up right now, it's gonna go from red to green. If I grab it, there you go, there's green, that's fine. Red, green, uh, try green. I guess it'll work over there. Uh, I don't believe that it would actually work over there, actually. No, it's red. You can barely see it. It's actually showing red on that side. There we go, that's the right information. So it's having a problem. So that's just telling you that your, your head, because it has to go past the work pace, because the, you know, this, this whole get up, the laser is at the center of this thing that's two and a half inches wide, and the laser beams, however small it is, is that you have to have room for that head to jog over and past. All right, so um, we need to edit now our information for here. This is how much power, this is all the, the settings for the image, how it's gonna come out. Any CO2 powered 40-ish watt laser to just engrave like we're doing here, 30%. That's what's recommended, it's what Full Spectrum recommends, it's what everybody recommends because it's what works. Speed's gonna be 100. Same thing, everybody recommends it, it's what works. Threshold's a matter of personal opinion. Threshold really represents how much data is gonna appear there. So if I click the threshold, if I knock it way back, right, you can see that we really lost a lot of data right there. That's at 11. If I crank it up, that's 180. We get some more information. You just adjust this to what you like, what you think looks best. For me, it was 200. So I popped in 200, all right? Uh, resolution, 250, I shot six of these things at 250, I shot three of them at 500 by 500. I could not tell the difference between them. That probably has more to do with what I was doing with the text and uh, I wouldn't say that there's not a difference between them because there, there most certainly is. By the way, I don't even think 1000 by 1000 was an option with RE2, I think that's new to RE3, but just go ahead and shoot it by 500 by 500. I think that's an easy recommendation to make. Just leave it that way. Uh, and then set your power settings. If you're engraving acrylic, 3100, threshold or whatever you want. Okay, let's talk about problems. Oh well, look, I just made all that information disappear. Let's say for whatever reason you come back, something happens, somebody touches this thing, you can't figure it out. All oh, my information's gone, where's, where's my power settings and all that? Well, it's because because it's all contained in here, but we don't actually have that particular layer highlighted. As I click on this again, click, 
boom, there's our information. So it's actually still there, which is really, really nice. Okay, let's talk about lining this up and then we're gonna be done here. So as you can see, I just lined this all up by eye. Now I, I did use the position. I happen to shoot them all at seven as a point of reference, not 77, right? That was my point of reference that I used. You could potentially drag this back on top, but you get the point here that uh, just nudging it. There we go. I have this at a slightly different than when I actually cut it, but when I, that's why it's not coming up. It's, it's a, you know, it's an image, it's a copied image of what I did, but for all, for all intents and purposes, using your nudge keys to center this within your workpiece that you have is way more than adequate for a job like this. So I got it all set up to where I like it. I probably actually cut it looking something like that. I can't really explain why it's off like this, but I just done 10 of them and they all came out excellent. And I'm really, really happy. They took about six minutes on the 250 power setting. They took up almost 15 minutes on the 500 power setting. So to do six of them took an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, again, the 250 power uh, sorry, the resolution, the 250 by 250 resolution was fine for me. Uh, for the very first one that I did, and so I would say that's that's adequate. From this point, um, you've got your you've got your, your actual workpiece with well, one side peeled off. You've got your image flipped upside down. You've got it over top of the picture of your workpiece. You've taken that picture of your workpiece. You've set your power settings. Uh, really, what you need to do is make sure you got your ventilation running at this point. Hit the go button. Sit back and enjoy. One thing I want to bring uh, out here is that between RE2 and RE3, they made some changes that I was really quite happy with. I think that the jog controls are a lot better, right? I like the menu. I like the information here about the, the IP address and all this. I've got this thing directly connected. I'm not going through a router. I'm not going through a wireless network. I'm just plugged straight from here into this laptop. I've dialed right into that IP address, and I'm pretty happy. Um, but when you actually go to cut or to do a project, it's gonna give you the full spectrum logo and it's going to fill the full spectrum logo up in blue, kind of like an hourglass or a little spinny deal. And it's gonna tell you uh, what your power consumption is and the time remaining on your project. So good job, full spectrum. You guys are definitely starting to, uh, to improve here, but a little bit more room for improvement on your, uh, on your information. So I'm gonna keep making these videos as I have these fun little projects, these things are really awesome. I think the kids are going to like them, and if you use them, you, you make your own, you're really going to like it too. All right, cool.